Hello everyone, today I'm going to introduce the uh, anaerobic digestion model number one. And this will be the first video in this topic and I will uh, present another video uh, on this topic later on. So what is the anaerobic digestion model number one or ADM1? Uh, this is uh, a model that was created by IWA or the International Water Association Task Group for mathematical modeling of uh, anaerobic digestion processes. It's uh, a dynamic model uh, uh, for uh, simulations of variety of anaerobic processes. And the ADM1 model describes the physical and biochemical processes within anaerobic digestion. So if we look at the reaction system in um, anaerobic digestion, we can find uh, some reactions, biochemical reactions, and also physical, physical chemical reaction as well. If we look at the biochemical reaction, uh, you are actually familiar with this schematic from maybe one of the videos that I presented before that anaerobic digestion is a process to to convert the complex material to uh, to uh, uh, component like uh, carbohydrates, protein, and fats, and then through this kind of hydrolysis process, this kind of component can be converted to monosaccharides and uh, fatty acids, uh, either long chain fatty acid, and then this uh, fatty acids can be converted to uh, longest chain fatty acid can be converted to short chain fatty acids, and this can go again uh, through uh, uh, processes uh, acetic elastic to produce acetic acid and hydrogen and carbon dioxide. And then at the end, uh, there is uh, methanogenesis that converts this methane, uh, that convert the acetate and hydrogen and the carbon dioxide to methane. So in this schematic also, you will find uh, basically the main processes. And uh, as we also described before that uh, biochemical processes can, uh, can be catalyzed by uh, extracellular enzymes. And also part of this model also have this kind of uh, disintegration of composites like uh, dead cells or dead biomass into other uh, compounds like um, particulate matters, and this particulate matter can be also again converted to similar like the organic in the and uh, in, uh, in the original substrate, and also the model or part of this reaction also contains the degradation of soluble material by organisms. And again, there is some decay or death of microorganisms that also can be included as part of the biomass for new uh, biomass uh, growth, or maybe it can also be converted to uh, other constituents. There are also uh, some kind of physicochemical processes or reactions. There are some liquid-liquid uh, reactions like ion association uh, or dissociation. There are some kind of also um, gas-liquid exchanges or liquid-solid uh, transformation like uh, precipitation, for example. But this actually is not really included in this model here. Okay, so the first actor actually, uh, first step to model processes, uh, we have to make some kind of mass balances actually around the reactor, for example. So if we look at this schematic here, we can find the reactor can have two phases, gas phases and gas phase, sorry, gas phase and liquid phase. And this liquid phase has a biochemical and physicochemical fisco, reaction or physicochemical processes and also conversion processes inside the liquid. And the gas phase also has some kind of physical uh, processes like mass transfer or between the gas phase and the liquid phase. And also here we can find uh, uh, the outlet, for, of course, from of the gas. So if we look at the mass balance around this, we will find that we have some kind, 
uh, if we have actually some kind of reactor or digester, basically, as we mentioned before, we use digester or reactor to be similar, just for terminology. And if we have a system here, like a continuous steel tank reactor, we have uh, some kind of flow to come in, and there are some processes inside the system, and there are some kind of effluent comes out from the digester. And of course, again, there is some gas that can be can be produced, and this gas can end up to outlet of the reactors as well. So if we look at this schematic again here, we have if we have Q, the flow rate of uh, liquid liquid phase, and we have here uh, of course liquid means that it has some kind of uh, water, uh, some kind of uh, components that actually dissolve it in water. This um, this compound can be particulate matter or soluble matter, it depends on the composition of the substrate that you are going to treat inside the digester. Uh, of course, we have here effective volume of reactors. This is V, basically, V liquid. And of course, we have V for the gas. And we have, uh, again, we have a stream concentration of uh, liquid components. And also we have particulate matter if we have any concentration of a particulate uh, compound. What happened here is that this uh, uh, material comes in at certain co concentrations. They are gone under. They undergone um, uh, some physical chemical processes and biochemical processes, and part of this will be converted to uh, biogas, methane, and carbon dioxide. Of course, this can be ending up again uh, to the outlet, or the other the other part can be still uh, some kind of intermediate like VFAs or uh, sugar. This can still be used by uh, uh, by uh, bacteria and by by archaea inside the digester to produce uh, this methane again. So part of this is the the parts that are not converted. Of course, will end up to the effluent, and again uh, you have also outlet uh, from the digester, and it has, you will also have some concentration of different um, component here. So again, we assume that this is basically the continuous steel tank reactor, but can, can we use also AD model for batch? Yeah, we can use batch. What does it mean batch? Batch means that you don't have actually inflow or anything to come into the system. So basically you start the, the, the system with certain amount of inoculum and put the substrate inside. So basically you don't have anything comes in and at the same time, you don't have anything comes out because basically you will keep the system actually isolated or uh, closed from both ends. So there is no inflow or outflow from the system. Means that you can actually just consider this as batch. Can also use a model for uh, accumulation system or feed batch system. Yes, still feed batch system means that you don't have outlet. You have actually uh, starting with certain amount of the material inside, and then you add every day or whatever actual time frame you are going to feed the system under flow rate, under certain flow rate. And in this case, you will have only inflow, but you don't have outflow. This again, this for accumulation system or the feed batch system. Okay. So what we do? Uh, so uh, the mass balance means that we can actually have this accumulation here. So if you uh, if you are familiar with this equation, this is very simple. What happened? What happened here? You will have the uh, the initially you have the volume of the liquid times the concentration of uh, certain compound, which is maybe compound I divided by the time. So basically, the 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 change of the flow rate of this compound comes into the system through a certain amount of time or unit time, whatever actually uh, your time step will be, and then equal to what this basically what happened here. This is the VQ. This is the, the accumulation of this compound inside the, the system. The accumulation equal to what comes in, Q, I, N, S, I, N for I, means that the flow rate of, uh, of the influent times the concentration of compound I minus the what outlet so uh, again we are talking about what about this continuous steel tank reactor here means that you have inflow and outflow okay so plus the summation of 
uh, rho j uh, v i j what does it mean this means that you have some kind of convergence inside the system if you have this kind of uh, uh, kinetic rate for the processes j so the, the model itself actually here the AD model has 19 processes so 19 processes uh, start from maybe uh, a disintegration or hydrolysis and then uh, mesangiogenesis, acidogenesis, decay of different different uh, uh, different bacteria and different archaea. I'm going actually to to postpone how to read the the matrix to another video. Uh, otherwise, this will be a long video. Okay. So what happened here again? So this again, this is continuous steel tank reactor means that you have inflow and outflow as I mentioned, and this can be uh, again uh, if you start actually with this uh, kind of mass balance, you can actually simplify this a little bit. So what happened here? If you have continuous steel tank reactor means that the the flow rate of the influent should theoretically equal to the flow rate of the effluent means that the Q I I N should equal to Q uh, out. So means that you can just consider this as a flow rate of substrate, basically, divided by the volume of the, the, the volume of the liquid inside the digester or the reactor times the uh, uh, SIN, which is uh, a concentration of compound, compound I, for example, if we consider maybe just the particulate matter in this case. So the concentration of particulate matter in the, the, the material comes in minus the, the concentration of this particulate matter in the, the digester. And this, again, this is uh, S liquid here or S liquid here. This means that uh, basically you consider the system as continuous continuously mixed, which means that the concentration of this compound inside the digester should be equal to what comes out from the digester itself, okay? This is why you have actually Q liquid, so means that the concentration of the, the substrate or this kind of compound inside the digester is equal to what comes out at the outlet of the digester, okay? Again, you have 19 processes. I'm going to postpone this until uh, another video. And 19 processes, for each process, you will have some kinetics. So if you have here, this is a kinetic parameter or kinetic rate for a process J, uh, times the stoichiometric coefficient of compound of compound I, for example. So if we have, uh, for example, hydrolysis, we will have a kinetic parameter for hydrolysis uh, step, which is uh, hydrolysis means that here in it will be J, and hydrolysis of, for example, of uh, of uh, lignocellulose, cellulose, for example, or cellulose. This is will be I, and then you have stoichiometry. A coefficient to convert this uh, maybe uh, cellulose material or cellulosic material to uh, simple sugars, for example, or for uh, monosaccharide or for polysaccharide or this kind of uh, stoichiometry, basically. So, okay, so this is, uh, I'm going actually to postpone this until uh, next video to go actually through the matrix for different processes and uh, we will see how we can deal with this uh, uh, or to read the, the, the table that is uh, available in the AD model uh, number one and how can we also uh, use this into uh, some applications again. Oh, I forget about this one also. Uh, back to this. Uh, Back to this one again, if you have a batch again, so if you have a batch, this means that this terminology or this terms will be actually zero because basically again, you don't have in, you don't have out. So basically the uh, the uh, the concentration or the accumulation inside the system means that you will have V here. So basically you will have the volume of the liquid inside the digester times the concentration of the, uh, the liquid uh, of the, concentration of the compound inside the, the digester equal to the change rate or the, the kinetic rate of the processes of different processes inside the system. So this is basically the same thing for the batch, except that this term will be zero. And just you have to have the volume here because basically you need to have the accumulation inside the, the digester. If you have feed batch, in this case, as, as we mentioned, the, the Q out, the Q out will be zero means that you will have only uh, VQN uh, 
uh, times the SIN. So basically, you will have this terminology. Again, this uh, V liquid will be in this in this uh, side. Okay. With that, I would like to thank you, and uh, I hope uh, this will be informative, and see you next time. Bye-bye.